this be one of the best moments of your life. You're listening to the Business Mirror Podcast for a broader look on business with Senior Editor Dennis Estopase. Good day. Welcome to the Business Mirror Being Broader Look Podcast. Today, we podcast the Broader Look story titled, Still on Q, Returning Overseas Workers and Their Growing Economic Needs at Home. The story was written by University of Santo Tomas Professor Jeremiah Opiniano as a special report for the Business Mirror. It was published ahead of the International Labor Day 2021. For the text version online, please go to the Business Mirror website and search for Broader Look. For the print edition, please read the Business Mirror newspaper. Let's get on with the story. The answer to government's problem on returning overseas Filipinos amid the economic and health crisis may lie on a Chinese proverb, to know the road ahead, ask those coming back. And those coming back were considered modern-day heroes, and they numbered to over half a million. 519,566 overseas Filipino workers to be exact, as Labor Secretary Silvestre Bello III told President Duterte last April 19. In the good old days, from countries near and far away, these heroes whip out wallets to wire home their wherewithal to their motherland. Families whoop as worries on wealth are wiped away and wishes for a better life are whisked into reality. Market confidence is bolstered as remittances buttress the country's dollar reserves, buoying up such financial reservoir should national economic growth wither. But as Mary Hopkins sang, those were the days many thought would never end. The coronavirus disease of 2019 started the end of these days. In a cabinet meeting, Bello said that out of the nearly 3.5 million documented Filipinos living and working overseas, 19% or nearly 648,000 were displaced because of COVID-19. Secretary Bello explained this meant they lost their job or even if they did not lose their job, they could not earn a living because they were prevented from reporting to work because of the pandemic. Of those displaced, Secretary Bellio said the government was able to repatriate nearly 520,000 OFWs through a 5 billion peso fund. This meant the government spent on the average around 9,623 pesos and 40 centavos for the repatriation of one OFW. The chief of the Department of Labor and Employment, Ordole, said that the remainder of the 647,000 or about 49,000 are still in the process of repatriation. Secretary Bello said that nearly 79,000 overseas Filipino workers opted to stay on site. Secretary Bello told during the April 19 forum with President Duterte that it, this is not because they don't want to go home, but because many of them got vaccinated. Secretary Bello added many of these OFWs are in countries in the Middle East. So with the vaccination, the opportunity for re-employment was very high, so these Filipinos opted to stay, Secretary Bello said. The labor chief was lugubrious in saying that of the more than 3 million documented overseas Filipino workers, 19,148 were infected with COVID-19 and 950 of them died. On the bright side, Secretary Bello said that 10,466 OFWs who were infected have fully recovered. Through Facebook, migrant workers complain of canceled flights, share photos of returning Filipino workers in chartered or mercy flights. They bloviate on the despair but cite the patients while waiting to be released from quarantine facilities within 7 days to 14 days as medically advised. These OFWs express longing to be with their loved ones here, albeit the number of COVID-19 cases has reached the million mark. Their thirst for home will see them meet up with struggling business activities, cash-strapped compatriots, and widespread joblessness. This is the homeland they want to come back to, still the reasons that made them leave in the first place. The Philippine government had no choice. It is duty-bound to bring some of these heroes home. 
To this day, the government agencies servicing migrant workers handle returnees' quarantine and safe return journey, as well as provide some financial help. Fourteen months since the first pandemic-induced repatriation of Filipinos coming from Wuhan, China, return migration remains a headache for the Duterte administration. The biggest problem of the Overseas Workers' Welfare Administration, or OWA, is the repatriation of overseas Filipino workers, Secretary Bello told Duterte last April 19. In order to bring them home, repatriate overseas Filipino workers, which includes airfare, seafare, landfare, hotel expenses serving as quarantine accommodation, food and financial assistance, the OWA spent nearly 11.5 billion pesos, Secretary Bello said. If overseas Filipino workers wish to come home, they reach out to the nearest Philippine embassy or consulate and express intent to join a flight. They can also reach out to the government through social media pages. On the journey home, returnees get fetched to join the scheduled flight and then receive food and hygiene kits. The Philippine government primarily shoulders the cost of the flight home, even as the Migrant Workers Act or Republic Act 10.022 mandates recruitment agencies to co-finance the costs of repatriating the workers they hired. Upon arrival in the country's international airports, the returnees' profiles get recorded and they are asked to register to an online system called OASIS or the OFW Assistance Information System by the Department of Labor and Employment and its attached agency, the OWA. Before being sent to designated quarantine facilities such as hotels, motels, and inns, Returnees receive arrangement for swab testing in the quarantine facilities six days after arrival, as per current regulations. After quarantine, whether one gets positive or negative, the returning migrant worker is then transported by land, air, and sea to her or his community of origin. All these procedures are being shouldered by the OWA, with funds from the national government through Republic Act 11429 or Bayanihan 1, and Republic Act 11494 or Bayanihan 2. These services are on top of a one-time financial assistance that the Overseas Workers Welfare Administration gave to affected OFWs sent home, stuck at home, and still abroad through the Abut Kamay Ang Pagtulong Program. The OWA had even collaborated with private companies to offer returnees entrepreneurial training and livelihood packages like a program with a carbonated drink manufacturer where women returnees get trained and open sari-sari stores that became wholesalers or retailers of the manufacturer's products. Handling returning and repatriated migrants had already become an entire government burden. Never in the history of the country's involvement with overseas migration that numerous government offices became involved with returning overseas Filipinos. The droves of repatriations prompted the Interagency Task Force on Emerging and Infectious Diseases, or IATF, to designate a task group on the management of returning overseas Filipinos. Handling these returnees is from expressing intent to return to reaching her or his origin community in the Philippines. Sixteen government agencies, eight of which are departments, all help manage the needs of returning overseas Filipinos, be they repatriated migrant workers, seafarers, overseas Filipino workers voluntarily coming home, or even vacationing Filipinos who permanently reside abroad. OWA Administrator Hans Leo Kakdak said that as of April 10, nearly half a million overseas Filipino workers and returnees received money from the Abut Kamayang Pagtulong Program. The OWA relies on the funds mandated by Bayanihan 1 and Bayanihan 2 to render its services to returnees. Its trust fund, worth some 18.3 billion pesos, bankrolls the economic reintegration programs under OWA's aegis, according to CACDAC. Recently, Secretary Bello appeared to President Duterte to lessen the number of quarantine days for returning overseas Filipino workers given financial constraints. However, after hearing the medical explanations of epidemiologists, the president maintained the current 14-day quarantine. Beyond assistance and facilitation during their return trips, returned overseas Filipinos have also been offered a menu of economic packages and business training services. Five departments, two line agencies, 
Three government-owned banks and two state-run financial institutions have offered these business packages and loans. The OWA and the National Reintegration Center for OFWs offer the usual economic programs for returnees. For displaced or repatriated workers who are OWA members, the Balik Pinas Balik Hanap Buhay program gives them a maximum of 20,000 pesos as startup capital. For overseas Filipino workers incarcerated or who had died abroad, the OWA gives their families a 15,000 peso livelihood assistance through the Education and Livelihood Development Program. If overseas Filipino workers and their families are organized into groups with at least 51 members, they can avail of up to a million pesos worth of capital, raw materials, equipment, and business development assistance. This is through the OWAS Tulong Pangkabuhayan para sa mga samahan ng OFWs. The Labor Department also runs its own economic services. For a day, returnees can go to the nearest Dole Provincial or Regional Office and avail of a financial management seminar and small business management training. If they wish to run enterprises after being trained, the Labor Department directs these returnees to its Livelihood Development Assistance Program which gives them a business enterprise startup kit worth 10,000 pesos plus technical assistance to prepare business plans. The Agricultural Credit Policy Council under the Department of Agriculture has also created a loan window for repatriated overseas Filipino workers. The expanded Sure Aid and Recovery Project that gives returnees loans for agribusinesses of up to 10 million pesos. Returnees also get agribusiness training from the Agricultural Training Institute. Government banks run the OFW Enterprise Development and Loan Program Credit Facility with revolving loan funds from the OWA. Returnees can borrow a minimum of 100,000 pesos and a maximum of 2 million pesos for single proprietors and 5 million pesos for a group of overseas Filipino workers. Under the Department of Trade and Industry, the Small Business Corporation launched its Helping the Economy through OFW Enterprise Startups Program as a 100 million peso credit window course through partner financial institutions. Here, returnees can borrow a minimum of 10,000 pesos and a maximum of 100,000 pesos, with this loan being interest-free and not requiring any collateral. Also under the Trade and Industry Department, the Technical Education and Skills Development Authority or TESDA had lured OFWs abroad and returnees at home to its free online training programs. The Department of Social Welfare and Development has included some returning overseas Filipino workers in its social amelioration program when geographic communities are placed under enhanced community quarantine. And if returnees want to open enterprises using technology, the Department of Science and Technology launched its Innovation for Filipinos Working Distantly from the Philippines program. Separate from this set of economic packages for reintegration is another interagency effort, this time spearheaded by the Agriculture Department. Last year, the Department of Agriculture, the DOST, the DTI, TESDA, and the National Economic and Development Authority released Joint Memorandum Circular 7. To unify agribusiness-related programs and services that target repatriated overseas Filipino workers. These economic packages and entrepreneurship training activities are rolled out through the regional and provincial offices of the departments concerned. For more than two decades, migration analysts remark that return migration and economic reintegration are the Philippines' weakest links in managing Filipinos' overseas migration. Nonetheless, the Philippines is among the first migrant-origin countries to create official reintegration programs, American Alana Murphy wrote in a chapter for a freshly released book. Yet, Murphy thinks these reintegration services, from job referrals to entrepreneurship training and credit, still leave lots to be desired. And with the Philippines still searching for data on which OFWs return home and what are their profiles, Political scientist George Tigno of the University of the Philippines wonders if previous and ongoing reintegration programs have become effective aid for returnees. According to Professor Tigno, there has not been any clear assessment on the effectiveness of these entrepreneurial programs for returnees, especially at the local levels, so Filipinos are left with paper accomplishments for the sake of complying, Professor Tigno said. Professor Tigno and fellow UP political scientist Jean Encinas Franco 
were previously contracted by the Overseas Workers' Welfare Administration to assess the agency's reintegration programs. They found that a lot of the loans extended to overseas Filipino workers and their families are not being paid back. The two added that credit being extended and cash assistance being provided are not that much to convince the returnees to stay permanently. Their conclusion came about even when the OWA had turned over the Enterprise Development and Loan Program to the Land Bank and Development Bank of the Philippines in 2011, with OWA providing a revolving fund of 2 billion pesos. But according to Alana Murphy, who returns home matters. Murphy's evaluative research showed many overseas Filipino worker returnees have limited skills and capital and are largely unable to invest in or contribute to local development projects. There are five types of returnees, Japan-based migration analyst Jean-Marie Chris Bernas finds in a survey for Government's Institute of Labor Studies. There are returnees who are struggling to be reintegrated, such as household service workers, as they have a low level of preparation to return. There are also returnees disengaged to be reintegrated. They have insufficient level of preparedness to return and may be willing to stay home and not return abroad. Some returnees are also undecided to be reintegrated since they would like to go back overseas. They are somewhat prepared for the return flight and, at home, they are temporarily engaged in salaried employment or business. Others are engaged to be reintegrated, meaning these returnees have high levels of preparedness to come back home. The fifth type of returnees will be undocumented workers who were forcibly repatriated home and may also struggle in their reintegration. All these types of returnees came home during this pandemic. Thank you for listening to the Business Mirror Podcast for a broader look on business. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter at Business Mirror. Until next time.